All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeline of CRM. And today I am joined by Warren Greshes. How are you doing, Warren? Doing great, John. How are you? Excellent. And I'm here in lovely San Diego. And Warren, I think you're in South Carolina, is that right? No, I'm in Durham, North Carolina. Durham, North Carolina. I knew it was one of the Carolinas. Um, and how's Carolina? How's North Carolina today? Fantastic. It's, um, well, I'd say it's about 70 degrees and partly sunny and terrific day. Yeah, well, Warren is a well-known uh, serial entrepreneur, well-known speaker and author. He's written some great books. He's written one, The Best Damn Sales Book Ever, and he's written one also, The Best Damn Management Book Ever. And that's what I wanted to talk to, to Warren about today because I really like some of the ideas in the book. And um, so first of all, Warren, before we get into it, um, you know, you, you wrote the sales book. Why did you then feel the need to write a management book too? Well, because the sales book did so well that my publisher begged me to write another book. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, do you have any ideas? And I did because I do a lot of work, not just with, I speak a lot to sales in, in front of sales uh, people, you know, sale, uh, keynoting sales, big sales conferences. But I also do a lot of management conferences too, especially for sales managers. And I've worked a lot with small business owners. Right. And, and you know, they, they are always complaining about how do I motivate my people? How do I motivate? my people how do I find good people blah 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 so that gave me the idea to write the book yeah and and that is true because I mean I talk to a lot of people and it is a, a it is an ongoing issue you know how to find good people and sure how to motiv motivate them but you it, at the beginning of your book you talk about why you need self-motivated people rather than find people to motivate right. you know to find people who are self-motivated right. so talk a little bit about that well, you know, the problem with motivating others, you really can't motivate others. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you know, I can, listen, I can get up on stage and over the next hour and a half, I could do a fire and brimstone. I have them swinging from the chandeliers. <laughs> but 24 hours later, they're going to wake up, they're going to go, who was that guy? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, that's external motivation. And external motivation is really short-term stuff. The key to success is internal motivation. I don't teach people how to... I don't motivate people. I teach them how to develop the tools and the techniques that allow them to be better able to motivate themselves. And that's the key because, you know, I, I've had, I've had sales, sales managers and business owners say, well, I got to motivate you every day. I kick them in the ass. That gets them going every day. <laughs> and I say, well, hold a couple things wrong with that. First of all, kicking people in the ass is not motivation. It's movement. You're right. And the problem is movement stops. Mm -hmm. And then I say, what happens on the days when you're not there? Mm -hmm. If no one's kicking them, what are they doing? They're probably doing nothing. See, my point is, if you don't have self-motivated people, if you don't teach them how to motivate themselves and find them, find them ways to motivate themselves, then on the days you're not there, they're not doing anything. Right. Because they're only working when you're looking over their shoulder. Mm -hmm. And you can't be looking over their shoulder 24-7. If you are, you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't have your job. So how can you how do you teach people to motivate themselves cuz uh you know from the outside it would seem well that's something that comes intrinsically from within so how do you actually teach people not to really. motivate them? Mm -hmm. not really it doesn't come from within it, mm -hmm. you basically teach people how to motivate themselves you know it's like sales 101 mm -hmm. what does everybody always say if you want to develop long term loyal customers what do you do you probe for their needs you find out their needs and you fill their needs on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. If you do that, they never leave you. Well, guess what? It's the same thing with the people that work for you. They're your customers if you think about it. Right. For sure. Figure out what they want. You know, everybody thinks, you know, everybody, all these bosses and business owners and managers think, well, we're all working for the company. Yeah, right. You know how many times I've gotten, I've heard, of, I've heard a CEO get up in front of an audience and say, if we work real hard this year and put our noses to the grindstone, this company is going to do great. And I look at this audience of 3,000 people and they're sitting there going, who the hell cares? <laughs> but you know what they want to know? Yeah. How what's is it going to affect me? what's in it for me? Exactly. But here's the problem, John. Mm -hmm. If you went around to those 3,000 people and you said to them or you asked them, what would you like to be in for you? Most of them couldn't tell you. Exactly. They'd say stupid things like more money, uh, uh, more responsibility. I want to have a nicer house. I want to have a nicer bit, a newer car. What does that mean? They don't know. So your job as a manager, your job as a business owner is to probe for your people's needs. needs. Find out what it is that they want. If I can help you figure out your goals, 
for your life and your career. And then I can help you devise a plan that will get you working towards that and help you achieve that. Now you're going to come to work every day, not working for me, not working for the company, but working for yourself. Right. You're going to get up every morning and say, I can't wait to get to work today because you know that every day you come to work, you're getting that much closer to what you want. Yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a fantastic point that you raised there because I, th I, I mean, you're correct, is that if somebody doesn't see a connection to what they really want, even if they don't know what that is right now, um, then it's hard to be motivated. It's hard to not just go through the motions if you can't see a direct connection with, with what's important to you. Nobody gets up in the morning and says, I can't wait to get to work today because they pay me well. <laughs> no one ever says that. <laughs> Never. I, 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 I always, when I talk about this subject, I always poll the audience. I say, raise your hand if you ever worked at a job you hated. And they all raise their hand. <laughs> and then I say, keep your hands up if you ever got a raise on that job. Right. And they all put their hands up. I say, okay, now the day after you got the raise, you came to work. Did you now love the job? No, they still hated the job. <laughs> Money meant nothing. Money is not a motivator. Money only stops you from maybe hating your job a little more. <laughs> so, um, so another thing you talk about here is – um, communicate great expectations. Right. So to talk a little bit about that, so if you if you can help people discover what it is that they really want and you can get them focused on that, what's the communicate great expectations piece? Well, what you want to do is you want to let people know what you expect from them. And you not only want to let them know what you expect from them, but want, you want to let them know that you think that they can achieve it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's like, I, I used to work, I worked for a boss uh, many, 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 many years ago. I was... I had hair back then and <laughs> I worked for a guy who was the worst boss ever. And he taught, you know, he's in the book mm -hmm. and he used to tell us how much we stunk. <laughs> I mean, he would hold sales meetings on Friday afternoon at five 30 in the afternoon, just for the main purpose to ruse out, to waste, a, you know, ruin our weekend. Right. And he'd sit there and he'd say to us, I just want you guys to know you all suck. <laughs> and and he, he would tell us he knew we were going to screw up. And it's just, you know, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like if you tell your kid, you're never going to amount to anything. You're never going to be any good. You screw up at everything. And then one day you get a call from the cops that he's in jail and you're amazed. <laughs> what are you amazed about? You predicted it. You were right. right. You know, when you tell people that you expect the best from them mm -hmm. and you also tell them that you know you will get the best from them because you believe they can do it, they'll do it. And that's important. It's just, it's, it's. It's raising expectations. It, it, you know, my, my, my son had a teacher in, in the third and fourth grade. She was amazing. Mm -hmm. She taught above curriculum. Right. And she took a bunch of kids. Now, this was supposedly a gifted class. She took a bunch of kids, and she put their feet to the fire. She had them doing things they never thought they could do. I remember being there once on parents' nights. The parents were complaining she was too hard on their kids. So I loved the teacher. So I got up in front of everybody and said, listen, folks, this is a gifted class. If your kid can't do it, maybe your kid's not too gifted. <laughs> I said, leave her alone. She's doing great. I mean, my son could tend to get lazy. Right. But, man, he, he met the challenge. And at yeah. the end of the year, Every one of those kids rose to the occasion. Yeah. Imagine that. They out they outdid the expectations that even their parents had of them because this woman told them that they could do it, she expected them to do it, and she knew they could do it. Yeah, and I think that's and I think that's something that as you as you say, I think unfortunately that's not done enough because I do think that most people have talent and capability beyond what they believe. Maybe, as you said, maybe it's what they've been told. Maybe their experience has been that because they haven't had the right leaders or the right motivation. But I really do think that most people, there's a huge deficit between what they can achieve and what they believe they can achieve. So if you can really start to um, you know, push that idea, but in an authentic way, right? They have to believe that you really do believe that they can That's achieve. That's right. Most right? people suffer from low expectations. Mm -hmm. They really do. If if you you know if you tell people you don't believe they're gonna you're gonna they're gonna accomplish anything, they won't. You know, it's like it's like the bosses that say to me, you know, owners, business owners say, well, I can't even I can't take a vacation. How can I take a vacation? I can't leave. What mm -hmm. my business will go down the drain. I can't even go to lunch. I'm afraid this place will burn down. Then what happens? One day they go to lunch. Place burns down, and he's amazed. What are you amazed about? You all <laughs> predicted it. So you know this is the whole thing. So um, what is a what is a jump out of the bushes leader? Ah, that's my old boss Sal. It is same guy. He, he would jump out of the bush. 
I knew you'd screw up. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a leader that's looking for people to do something wrong rather than looking for them to do something right. Right, right. It, it's the kind of leader that will jump out of the bushes and say, ah, gotcha. I knew you'd screw this up. And I knew there was no way you could do this. And guess what? There isn't. You know, I used to come to him all the time with good ideas, and he'd say, you know, that is a good idea, but you know what? We're going to do it always. So you know what happens you after a while? Yeah, you don't come anymore. I don't come in with good ideas. Yeah. And so you say that if you, want, if you want people to listen and you want to motivate them, you have to start picking out the things that they've done right rather than the things that they've done wrong. Well, you got to do both. I mean, mm -hmm. if, you want to, if you want the right to tell people they're doing something wrong, right. you have to. Yes, yeah, sure. First of all, you have to allow people to make mistakes, mm -hmm. but you can't allow them to make the same mistakes over and over again. For sure. So you've got to do something that I believe is there's no such thing as, which is constructive criticism. It's like if I said to you, John, don't take this personally, but <laughs> next thing I say, you're going to take it personally. <laughs> but if you want the right to criticize me right. and show me what I did wrong and show me how to fix it, then if you want me to do it, if you want me to correct it, then you better be ready to praise me when I fix it. Right, right. See, if you praise me when I fix things, if you praise me when I correct my mistakes, then I'm more willing to listen to you when you criticize my mistakes. I have incentive. Right, as opposed to um, correct you on something and then when you fix that, I ignore it and I find something else to correct you on, right? That's right. If I'm just constantly correcting mm -hmm. and never recognizing, giving you recognition for improving and for correcting your mistakes, then there's no incentive for you to correct the mistakes. Recognition and achievement are two of the biggest motivators in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So to, uh, another part you talk about in your book is role models. And I, and I have a firm belief in role models, and they've been very important to me in, in my career. So what is the, for you, what's the importance of role models? Well, because you want to put your people together with, with people who are doing what they're doing, but doing it the way you want, the way, successfully. Mm -hmm. You know, as a, as a speaker, my, my career really started to skyrocket when I joined the National Speakers Association right. way back in, I, well, I joined in 86, but I didn't get active till like 1991. It's when I got active and I started meeting people who were really successful, who were doing what I wanted to do, that I latched onto the role models. You need people who are doing what you would love to be doing one day and figure out how they got to where they are. I'm not worried about where they are. I want to hear the story of how right. they got to where I am to where they got to how they how they got to where they are now. And that's the importance of role models. Too many people use ridiculous role models, you know, like Winston Churchill, Mother <laughs> Teresa, Martin Luther King. I mean, come on, none of your people are gonna be Winston Churchill, Martin Luther King, or, or Mother Teresa. But you use role models from within the organization. Yeah. Well, to, you've crushed my dream of becoming Mother Teresa. So there you there go. There you go. <laughs> Never gonna no, but I, I, I love this. Ed, that That's a great idea because um, I do think sometimes people look at those who are successful and instead of saying, I need to figure out how they got there. They go, oh, I could never, I'm never going to be as good as they are, right? You know, so yes. I think switching Absolutely. that around is really important. Giving up is the easiest thing to do. Of course, it's the stupidest thing you can do, <laughs> but it's the easiest thing to do. Yeah. So, um, so what is it about helping people build a, build a winning streak? So how do you get yeah. people onto a winning streak, first of all, and then how do you help them sustain it? Because it's one thing, right? You, everybody can get a win. You know, if you work hard enough and everything, you can get a win. But sustaining and you know, keep winning. Yeah, keep winning is the tough part, right? That's the key. You keep winning by developing good habits. One of the things I talk about is doing a little bit a lot, not a lot a little bit. Do a little right. bit a lot, not a lot a little bit. I also ask business owners, managers, don't give your people tasks you're not sure they can do. Figure out where their level is. In other words, if I get a new person comes to me, I give them the easiest things to do. Once I see they can do that, I increase the difficulty just a little bit. Right. I see they can do that, I keep increasing the difficulty a little bit. It's like with salespeople. You know the single biggest reason salespeople don't make enough sales? What's that? They don't talk to anybody. Yeah, that's true. They don't have they enough. They never pick yeah. up the phone. They never get any appointments. They never see anybody. They all tell you, yes, I know, I know. I got to make 100 calls this week. <laughs> I say to them, how many calls do you usually make? Oh, I don't know. I make lots of calls. I say, tell you what. From now on, you make a note of how many times you dialed the phone. And I say, okay, how many times you dial the phone in a week? Oh, about three. Yeah. You know? and, and so I say, but I know if next week I'm going to make 100 calls. You know what I tell them? 
Don't bother. Right. Because you can't go from three calls a week to 100 calls a week in one week without getting so freaked out by the rejection that you'll end up in a catatonic state. <laughs> so I tell them, how many calls, how many times can you literally dial the phone every single day without wanting to throw the phone out the window? <laughs> I said, could you do it three times a day? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, they probably never have, but okay. <laughs> I said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to dial the phone three times a day, every single day, every single day for a month. I don't give a damn if no one answers the phone. I don't give a damn if you get a dog barking at you. Mm -hmm. Just dial it three times a day. After three, you're done. Every day for a month. Next month, four times a day. Right. Every single day for a month. Next month, five times a day. Every single day for a month. Next month, six times a day. In three months, I've doubled their activity, mm -hmm. which means I could possibly double their sales. And so what I'm doing is I'm not break, I'm not trying to bust them out of their comfort zone. I'm just right. trying to expand their comfort zone. I'm creating a habit. Yeah. And so because I know if they make those calls every single day, even if they're total idiots, someone's going to buy from them. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to react to them. And so that's what I try to do. I, I, I help them. And the goal now becomes not sales. But activity, right? See, sales. The goal should never be sales. The goal should be activity, because yeah. activity, the generation of activity, is the only part of the entire sales process that is one hundred percent within the salesperson's control. Correct. Everything else, you need somebody else to say yes. Mm -hmm. But if you just have activity goals every day, you never lose. Mm -hmm. The only reason you lose is because you're lazy. Yeah, and and the and you know, I mean, the reality is, it's it's a numbers game because the from the perspective of right, um, you don't know at what point I'm going to be ready to listen to what you have right. to to sell. So, and it's so therefore, if you just call me once and you get my voicemail, you never bother again. You know, you're never going to sell right. to me, right? But you might call me once, you might call me a second time three months later, and three months later it might be the right time to talk to me. Okay, so. The key to selling is to be in front of the prospect when he or she is ready to buy. Exactly. Because we never really know when he or she is ready to buy. We better be in front of them a lot of times. Exactly. Exactly. So um, your, your final chapter in this book is helping people understand the importance of their jobs. And, right. this is, uh, and, and I think this is an important point because I do think sometimes – People look at their jobs as well. I'm just a cog in the. I'm just a cog in the machine here. I'm just. This is. I'm just a bit part player. Because no one's ever explained to them what their job means. Mm -hmm. No manager's ever taken the time to to explain to them. It's like you know when you hear the receptionist say, "I'm only the receptionist right. here." Well, right away that tells you what she thinks of her job. Yeah, when reality, she's a frontline person. It's like sales. Well, it's like salespeople don't. Always, you know, I think salespeople don't always realize that they are the tip of the spear, the interface with the customer. There, where the guys can sit up in the executive suite and set strategy, but you're the one who's out there who's actually communicating with people about the business. So if you're not getting, if you don't have the right messages, it doesn't matter what they say upstairs. Nothing happens until somebody sells something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I had a business owner a couple of years ago. I remember in a meeting of business owners I, I spoke at, said to me, you know, I got this receptionist. She wants to take time off. And, you know, she wants to break during that. You know, she's the receptionist. I can't have her away from the desk. I said, does she understand that? Did you ever sit down and talk to her about the importance of her job, why her job's important? And by the way, the receptionist is probably the only person in the entire company that speaks to every single customer. Yep. And I said, did you ever find out why she wants this, what she's looking for? Oh, he said, so basically it's to drill down and find out. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> You're selling to her. She's your customer. <laughs> Nobody understands that. Everybody's got to understand why their job is important. If I know that my, you know, if she can't be away from the desk, you're saying her job's important. Does she know her job's important? Exactly. And and so the essence, as we bump up against the end of our time, the essence of, of what you're saying here in, in your in your management book is that there is a lot of active things that a manager needs to do, understand their people, drill down with them, make sure that they're, um, you know, setting them up for success, making them understand, finding their, helping them find their motivations. Um, that's a lot different, to be honest, from a lot of people who approach management as just, as long as I'm, you know, keeping, as long as I'm just keeping everything ticking over and I'm, you know, signing off on, on the uh, vacation requests and everybody's doing what I think they're supposed to be doing, then I'm doing a good job. But that's, that's yeah, not, but you're really, not, you're not, 
And you know, you know what? There's only two ways to find good people. Either you steal them from somebody else or you develop the living crap out of what you have. Right. Now, as far as I'm personally, I prefer the latter, far more prefer the latter. Why? Because when you're stealing from somebody else, first of all, it's going to cost you a lot more money, mm -hmm. a lot more money. Second of all, how do you know you're not getting some other company's crappy culture? Yep. But if I, de if I develop the living crap out of what I have, then they're, they're buying into my culture. Yep. And the culture, start, culture of a company starts from the top. Innovation starts from the bottom up, but culture is top down. Mm -hmm. And so if you develop the people you have, you know, I, I, you know what? My, my son is dealing with this now. He's a recruiter for a company, and he brings in good people. And they say, well, no, we don't want him. He might leave us in a couple of months. Yeah. And I get that all the time. Well, what do we want to train these people? They're just going to leave me yeah. and go on to something bigger and better. I say, so in other words, your goal is to only hire <laughs> mediocre morons. Yeah. Or, yeah, it's that, it's that old um, saying. It's like, um, but what, you know, what happens if I train them and develop them and they leave? And you say, okay, but what happens if you don't train them and they stay? Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And catch this. If you train them and they leave, you know what your place becomes known as? A, a great, launching pad. Yeah, a great place to can, go. That gives you an ability to recruit the best young people because they know working for you will lead to bigger and better things. Yeah, so it's a win-win really at the end of, of the day. Of course it is. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, Warren, this has been great. Before you before we go, do you know just tell the viewers a little bit more about you and how they can learn more? Well, they can go to my website at www.greshes.com. That's G-R-E-S as in Sam, H-E-S as in Sam.com. That's my website. Um, and I'm a professional speaker. I'm an author. I'm a consultant. I've traveled the world over the last, since 1986. Let me put it that way. I don't want to do the math. I went to a public school. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah. So I've been traveling the world, keynoting conferences for corporate corporations and associations. I speak a lot of big conference sales meetings and sales manager meetings and small business conferences and things like that. And I try to help people to be better at who they are and what they do. And I try to help people also improve their business and become more successful. Yeah, well, listen, this has been great, Warren, and I uh, highly recommend. I've really enjoyed this conversation. So if anyone's watching and they have a sales kickoff or a sales meeting or a conference coming up, I uh, highly recommend you check out Warren. As you can see from this, uh, he's got a lot to say, and he says it with enthusiasm and humor. <laughs> I got a lot to say even when I'm not being paid. <laughs> For sure. All right, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. It's been a pleasure talking with Warren today, and I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thanks, John.